Helldivers 2 is a game where you quite easily get overwhelmed with a lot of trash. And by trash, you know exactly what I mean. The scavengers, the small bile spewers, the hunters. No matter what, you're constantly being surrounded and overwhelmed by small enemies. And those groups of small enemies require a tool that is both fast and efficient at clearing them. And thus enters the room, a tool designed specifically to deal with just that problem. The Breaker Incendiary Shotgun. An incendiary breaker is a weapon that frankly is more fun than function, but that doesn't mean it's without purpose. Far from it. While its cousin the OG breaker recently saw a nerf to its ammo and recoil, the incendiary variant stands as one of the most well-balanced weapons currently in the game. Truly, I can't think of anything I'd change here. It seems appropriately designed for what it was intended to do. And while its damage is modest, its function lies deeper than just pure DPS. The incendiary, which is what I'll be calling it from henceforth, is that trusty crescent wrench of the toolbox. Always there for you when you need it, with the small projects around the home. Plenty of utility to offer. However, it knows its purpose and doesn't stray outside of that. What do I mean by all this? Well, let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? The incendiary boasts an ammo capacity of 25 shells, with a damage rating of 180. That puts its overall DPR, which I'm referring to as damage per reload, right at 4500. That's actually ahead of the newly nerfed standard breaker at 4290. Another facet of the incendiary worth mentioning is that instead of firing in full auto, it fires in bursts of three. This is done because of the tremendous heat generated during your liberal democracy spreading. What's interesting about the burst function is that the weapon still operates in semi-automatic fashion. A single pulls of the trigger fire single shots. It's only when you hold the trigger does the incendiary unleash three consecutive shots, requiring you to release and pull to fire again. This means you can either tap the trigger, firing in semi-auto, or hold the trigger and time your trigger pulls so that you release and pull in rhythm to essentially simulate full auto. It does, after all, have the same fire rate of its recently humbled cousin, so it's entirely possible to achieve the same effect and with more ammo per mag. So does all of this make the incendiary the new shotgun meta? Not likely. For one, the spread of the incendiary is a wild one to say the least, fanning out pretty aggressively past a range of about 10 to 20 meters. That means this weapon is designed purely for close range encounters and should be paired with a sidearm or support weapon that offers a bit more reach should you desire. Also, because of its designed utility, which we'll get to in a moment, it lacks the immediate stopping power of its kneecapped cousin. So that's likely to turn off those of you who lack the patience to watch this beauty work. Which seems to be just about everybody these days. So let's break it down. Why would you use the incendiary? Well, for starters, it's one of the best wave clear weapons in the game. Efficiently and generously dishing out hot bursts of democracy to all who stand in its way. It excels against small and light armor targets, one-shotting scavengers and baby spewers, and two-shotting hunters. Unloading a full burst at close range is enough to pop the head off a warrior, while you'll likely need all 25 shots or 8 bursts to drop a brood commander, though this can vary at times if some have dropped sooner. Nursing spewers take about 3-4 to four bursts to the head, while armored spewers will unfortunately require body shots, usually meaning a full or close to full magnum. Chargers take no projectile damage unless hit in the back, and while the flame from the rounds do penetrate all the armor, it's not enough to really make a difference here. When it comes to chargers, you need to rely on your support weapons as usual. If you can tear off their leg armor, the incendiary can then do damage just like any other weapon, and drop them fairly quickly. Curiously enough, the ever-hated stalkers actually drop with just three shots to the face, or one full burst. 
Though it's worth noting you're rarely in a circumstance like I was here, easily able to line up three accurate shots. Still, it's worth noting. But accuracy isn't the incendiary's game. In fact, understanding how to utilize its widespread is part of the fun of its utility. Unlike its recently embarrassed cousin, the incendiary's rounds travel slower and are easily visible due to, well, being on fire. This enables you to sort of paint the battlefield in flame, as you sweep back and forth launching many fire projectiles into the ranks of your oncoming foes. Almost as if you're dusting crops, or simply fertilizing the future manure of Super Earth. You might be asking, why wouldn't I just shoot at them instead of over them? Fair question. The answer is because one, it doesn't look as cool, and two, you want to spread the tiny fire rounds as far and wide as you can. Reason being, most of the little stuff like the scavengers or baby hunters or spewers will die soon after being hit by just one shot of the fire. This means direct projectile damage isn't necessarily always required, and instead they just need to catch the flame. Turns out the little guys don't like being cooked, so that's why we're going to cook them. And thus we arrive at our singular point here. The incendiary is a wave clear weapon meant to take out all the trash that nibbles at your ankles and stabs you in the ass when you're not looking. We all know how annoying that is, so let's take extreme prejudice when dealing with such vermin. And by that, I mean set them all on fire and watch them burn. Sweet liberty. It is after all not only fun, but highly effective. The incendiary excels at dealing death to light armor, but that means hive guard can be an issue. In these cases, I like to bring along the senator, as usually three well-placed shots to the head will drop them, give or take. Although the incendiary's fire damage does penetrate their armor, you'll need to maneuver to their side to dish out the real damage behind their shielded faces. Speaking of faces, the armored spewers have an armored faceplate, inherent in the name, right? In these specific scenarios, I think the Senator works well as a backup, as it's able to penetrate their armor with relative ease. But you use whatever sidearm you prefer. That's simply my recommendation. Alright, so let's bring this home with a few final points. The Incendiary Breaker excels at clearing waves of light infantry, mostly due to its widespread and fire-infused ammunition. These characteristics also lend themselves beautifully to the destruction of pesty egg nests. Firing just a single burst can often be enough to take out a dozen eggs with a few well-placed shots. This means the incendiary is not only excellent at killing adult bugs, it's damn efficient at aborting the babies too. In any other scenario, I might frown at this notion, but since the bugs hate liberty, this is in service of the greater good. Burn babies burn. Oh, also, a random note I forgot to mention earlier. The incendiary fires 12 fire-infused rounds each pull of the trigger. That means with each burst you're sending forth 36 burning-hot, democracy-loving suppositories straight into the buttocks of our enemies. I just thought you'd like to know. To sum up, the incendiary breaker is a tool worth using in the right hands. While its limited armor penetration is unfortunate, its fire rate, ammo capacity, widespread, and incendiary rounds make it a formidable foe for any light armor target too dumb to step in its way. While its recently humiliated second cousin, the original Breaker, is still a capable weapon, the incendiary is flashier, brighter, burns hotter, and gets chicks while doing so. Of course, your mileage may vary. The incendiary Breaker gets a liberty-loving stamp of approval. March 4th, soldiers, for Super Earth. Hey you. Yeah, you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more. Also, let me know down in the comments what other weapons you'd like me to review. Until next time.